This week, the Democratic Alliance's Member of Parliament, Diane Kolobarnard, released a scathing statement directed to the Minister of Communications and Digital Communi uh, Technologies, Mondi Gungubele. This came after the Minister's Parliament's written response to Kolobarnard's question regarding the delays in obtaining approval for Elon Musk's satellite internet service, Starlink, to operate in the country. Since its launch in 2020, more than 4,000 satellites have been orbiting space. The prevailing South African legislations require individual companies and applicants or licensees to have a minimum 30% equity ownership held by persons from historically disadvantaged groups. Now, to talk more about this, we're joined by Arthur Goldstock, the founder of Worldwide Work. Arthur, great to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Leanne. Good to be speaking to you again. All right. So just very quickly, what is Starlink? What, what, Starlink, what is it all about? Starlink is uh, Elon Musk's initiative to provide broadband access globally from space via satellites. And uh, these are what they call low Earth orbit satellites, which means that unlike previous satellite connectivity, you don't have that massive lag between clicking a button, in other words, sending a signal and then getting a response back, which in the past meant that satellite connectivity was very slow and frustrating. With low Earth orbit uh, satellites, uh, you have far faster speeds, but also far less lag. So even uh, online gaming is possible. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, that's one of the promises they make. So th there's about 100 megabit per second uh, downlink, sure. which is faster than most people will get on their cell phones to their mobile operators, and about 20 megs per second uh, uplink. uplink. Yeah. And it's quite it's quite incredible actually what you're saying and i mean if we if we look at at sort of the countries that starlink satellites are already uh, helping which countries are we talking about it's uh, it's globally the most dramatic example is ukraine where it's allowed internet access to continue uninterrupted uh, but partly because musk himself uh, shipped a large volume of uh, receivers to ukraine but having said that, he then expected the U.S. government to pay him uh, for those. So he doesn't do anything without some kind of return uh, for himself. It uh, must be added, though, that they claim that so far 20 African countries have access. And um, in due course, most African countries will have access, but it's not as easy as that. There's a, a fascinating map that Starlink themselves provide. If you go to the Starlink.com website and you pull up their coverage map, You'll see Africa is still the dark continent. Mm. Nigeria and Rwanda, I think, are the only countries that are active. You hover over each country and it tells you when they expect to get access. And most of Africa expects access this year or next year. The uh, one of a few exceptions is South Africa, where the service date is unknown at this time. And that's because they can't get approvals to provide their service in South mm. Africa. If you are able to import the, um, the, 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 the receiver and the equipment, you can actually get it here, but it's going to be fairly uh, costly. That's crazy. But uh, in terms of official access, the South African um, government's regulations don't allow a company like Starlink to operate in South Africa without giving someone locally 30% uh, equity in the uh, local business and we know how that ends yeah. up in this country indeed and and, and we believe that i mean <clears throat> we look at a company like starlink which is massive and somebody like elon musk i don't think he's i don't think he's even negotiable on something like that i can't imagine that he would he would just give 30 percent equity away of his company to operate in south africa no it's, it's a laughable uh, expectation um the, the uh, are other requirements as well that you see across Africa, like Tanzania, for example, is very close to giving approval, but they're requiring that Starlink actually set up an office in Tanzania. So various countries are looking at bureaucratic ways to stop additional competition from coming into this country to uh, prevent universal access. The government talks the language of universal access, but doesn't actually Practice. Uh, give effect. Yeah. to uh, the concept in this country and that's a that's a big problem but let me let me ask you this how what difference will it make to but perhaps let, let's let's look to rural areas you spoke about the speed of it which is which is fantastic and it would be a very fast um a fast internet speed for us pricing 
access for people that don't have internet, uh, how much of a difference will it make? So that's uh, the one area where the DA gets it wrong. Uh, simply by providing access to South Africa isn't suddenly going to mean that kids in rural areas have access uh, to the internet because it's expensive. The equipment itself is not cheap and then the monthly subscription would be something like 2,000 rand a month. But within that 2,000 rand a month, it's a huge amount of data that you can uh, download. It's, uh, it's 1,000 uh, gigabytes of data for 2,000 rand, which compares very well with some of the uh, best uh, mobile data packages in the country. It's about five rand. Um, it's about 20 cents a meg. Okay. So that's, that's not expensive, but the actual subscription Setup. itself yeah. is, is highly expensive. So what is uh, potentially going to happen is that local operators will get that uh, service and then sell it on to people in their areas or provide it on a sponsored basis yeah. to people in rural areas. Okay. So it does have the potential to change the situation in rural areas. Okay, Arthur, very quickly, I'm, um, oh, I know we've got no time. I don't even know if we're able to. I asked the minister about Starlink. This was his response. If we can quickly play it, this is what he had to say. That the ANC government um, has blocked Elon Musk from launching Starlink in South Africa. Let me get it from you. Did you block Elon Musk from launching SpaceX's satellite-based Starlink internet service in South Africa? The claims are that he needed to be BEE compliant, that he needed to give 30% of the company to, well, as media reports have been saying, to the ANC in order to work in South Africa. He refused and doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. Is there truth to this? What is going on with Starlink? Uh, let, let me... Sorry, Leon, that, that is not the item on my table at the moment. It's an item that I read, uh, I see it in the newspapers. And I'll be very careful as a new minister to make comments with regard to that. So the minister reads about this in the newspapers. He doesn't really know about this. Uh, is this, for your opinion, a viable solution? Do you honestly think the, the minister of uh, communications, electronic communications, is not a fay with Starlink? We identify that the Ministers of Communication are, are not okay with uh, either these services and technologies available or the needs of uh, the country. We've uh, very rarely had a Minister of Communication who could actually move forward the whole agenda for connectivity in this country. All right, Arthur, we've got to leave it there. We'll have to talk more into this because uh, this is just the start of the conversation into something that perhaps can help the country quite a bit with internet access and getting it out to people that don't have any internet access still and fast communications. Arthur Goldstock is the founder of Worldwide Works.